All right, I'm gonna make sure I'm plugged in. Yeah, that's plugged in. Um, All right. What's going yeah. on everyone? Big Savage here with the man of the hour, Ben, Lynx Project, h Powell, And we're back because there's some cool things rolling out. Work, work, a lot of work, tons of work is being done behind the scenes, which I love. And yes, I'm curating my top list of platforms and projects and links. It's definitely in one of them, <laughs> it's in the top one. Uh, so Ben, let us, let us hear a little bit about what's been up and h Powell. What's going on? Right, so h, h Powell. I haven't heard it put that way, but I like it. It's got, <laughs> this, you know, it's got this cool ump to it. So for those of you that don't know, uh, you know, you've got all these different names of these different projects out there. You know, proof of work, proof of drive space, proof of time. Well, Lynx is still proof of work. It's not okay. proof of stake. Uh, and so we modified the name of it just a little bit hybrid proof of work. So that's why it's H-P-O-W, hybrid proof of work, h I got you, okay. Right. Yeah, so that's why we call it that hybrid proof of work. And I don't know, maybe I could have gotten a little bit more creative with my name, right? Because uh, all we did was just uh, change some of how proof of work works within awesome. our project. Okay. And that's really, that's what differentiates us from uh, Litecoin. So this is, is our this upstream. Is, uh... This is proprietary technology right here? Well, I don't know about proprietary. I mean, we're open source. We're on okay. GitHub. You can, go, you can go to our GitHub repo is, uh, it's a, I think the, our repo channel is Get Links. Get Links, okay. And I can post the link. Get, yeah. GitHub.com slash Get Links. And okay. then you'll see the Links project on there. So okay. everything's open source. We don't really hide anything. It's all there. Cool. Uh, we're the only project that is doing what we're doing. <laughs> Unless someone's forked us, and I just don't know of it yet. You're getting forked uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's an inevitability. I assume someone's going to, you know, steal what we're doing for their own ends. And I, I get that. Uh, or, uh, or they're going to disagree with how, how we take the project, and they're going to they're gonna fork the project. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have a Lynx Classic pop-up one day soon. <laughs> like yeah. It. So, so yeah. what's the What's a little bit of the backstory? You know, what, why HPOW and what are, you, what are you, what's the direction of links? What are you excited about? Okay, so great question. And we might have spoken about this. We actually spoke, oh, uh, just over a year ago. Yeah, one year uh, ago. You had me, you were kind enough to have me on your channel. Uh, we looked it up a little before we turned the video on and it was a little over a year ago. And we had just released our white paper only a few uh, days or weeks before our, our first interview. So, so much has changed since then, so much has developed. But back to the fundamentals, just like you were asking. The uh, inception, the project idea was, I wanna go ahead and solve this uh, high hashing power issue. So, like, you know, uh, in Satoshi's white paper, many of us have read it, there's a line in there where Satoshi, he or she, or they say, the security of the chains going to be maintained by the expending of electricity and hardware resources. And so, what do you know? What, it's almost 10 years later since the white paper came out, or maybe it is 10 years. Um, you've got these super powerful ASICs yeah. chewing up a lot of electricity. So, you know, the ASICs are pretty expensive. And, you know, we already can't mine our laptops anymore. We can't mine with our graphics cards anymore. We're on these super awesome ASICs, which are amazing computers, or devices. And uh, they cost a lot of money, and they chew a lot of electricity. Up. And yeah. so you can go onto uh, blockchain.info, I guess, or these uh, statistic sites, and you can see, I think in 2018, the amount of electricity that the Bitcoin network alone was going to consume is something like $3.6 billion. That's Whoa. what miners paid wow. for electricity in 2018. Isn't that crazy? Yes, man. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. crazy. So you got that, you look at that chart, the hashing power rate, you know, that, uh, and you see that grow. And, you know, obviously there's a correlation to the amount of electricity that's consumed to get those hashes. Yeah. I thought that's not sustainable. And so <laughs> I'm a business guy. I want to, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I want, I want to build businesses. I want to use blockchain technology in my businesses. And there's so many different ways to leverage it. So many different ways to use it. Well, I can't build on top of Bitcoin. <laughs> because I, I, at the growth rate and the energy expenditure that it goes through for, for five transactions per second, I'm using all the you know, energy equivalent to Austria. Yes. And, 
yeah, it's not, it's ridiculous. It's not sustainable. So we were thinking about that before you and I talked uh, a year ago. So it was over a year ago. We were thinking about that. And actually we had been thinking about that for almost two years now. And so that was the thing that I wanted to solve is like, how can we keep doing what Bitcoin and Litecoin does, uh, but just figure out how to reduce the cost so that I've got my fun toys here so that wouldn't it be cool if I could get the whole network to oh. mine on a, an array of Raspberry Pis? Nice. Wouldn't that be cool? Nice. You know, so but people are like, well, I've already got Litecoin running on my Raspberry Pi. Yeah, but is it mining on a Raspberry Pi? Yeah. Well, no, it can't because the Raspberry Pi can't get the hashes out to, yeah. to do what needs to be done because the hash rate's so high. And Bitcoin's just so far up. Uh, and also the size of the blockchain. You need like, what, 27 gigs of drive space just to store the Bitcoin blockchain. So yeah. the idea was, why don't we, why don't we figure out how to, what, what we need to do to solve this problem so we can get links to work on a Raspberry Pi. And gee whiz, you know what? This is cool. <laughs> I've got I've got my toys here. I've got this stack. Here is one. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, this is cool. You can go on Amazon.com and buy this. Uh, there's a company in uh, Wichita. I think it's Wichita. Uh -huh. C4 Labs. They're really cool guys. And they make these acrylic cases for Raspberry Pis. And oh, you no. just go on Amazon and buy this. Like, I don't know, 50 bucks, $40. And you put it together. It's real fun. One of our community members, he did it with his kid. And this kid was eating it up. It's like, like, it's like a Lego thing, you know, it's a fun little project. Yeah. So you put your four Raspberry Pis in there, you power it up, and you've got this cool little mining farm. The whole thing runs on that. That's cool. Nice. Well, it's even better. It's not the most efficient thing in the world. It doesn't <laughs> run the fastest, but this actually works. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero. Oh, man. Yeah. Inside that little case. Wow. It's only, it's got pretty limited hardware resources, but wow. I actually have it working. If I plug this in, if I plug in the power cable to it right now, uh, -huh. uh and it runs wirelessly too so let's see i plug that power cable and i plug it in that's running it's nice. mining links it's verifying and relaying transactions in our network wow that's cool so and that looks sustainable to me <laughs> that's pretty damn sustainable isn't it <laughs> yeah so i mean this 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 pie only uses a few watts of electricity i think the the price to run a pie is something like less than a penny a day Really? In electricity costs. Wow. Yeah. It, it doesn't even get so hot that you have to put a fan on it. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's how little electricity is. So you just, I have one, uh, you can see my TV in the background. On the back of my TV, uh -huh. it's, it's, I have the card, I have the little SD card set up with yeah. my Wi-Fi info on it. I pop it in here. I plug this into the, into the USB port on the back of my TV. So whenever I sit down to watch some Netflix, my Lynx node pops up. It's mining. It's doing its thing. I can turn off the TV. I go to bed. Okay, that's cool. It's fine. You know, it's doing its thing. And now we're different than other projects. You, with links, you don't mind to, to make money. You don't mind to get profitable. It's unprofitable to mine links. That was one of the first business rules that we implemented okay. to be able to solve this eco-friendly approach. So really the eco-friendly piece, that, um, well, that was, that was the goal is to be able to get the hashing power let down and the electricity consumption down. And it brings up a lot of questions. Gotcha. So, so viewers, so yeah. So the Raspberry Pi is, is to secure the network, is to keep it uh, afloat. <laughs> yeah. And so people, people naturally say it's savvy listeners, viewers are going to say, well, Ben, dumb, dumb. You're obviously not too smart. <laughs> How... <laughs> And they're right. You know, this is the question you have to ask first. Help me is, the money. <laughs> right. Uh, how do you keep the network secure if your hashing power is so low? Everyone's going to come along with a 51% attack. I could 51% attack your computer network <laughs> with my laptop. And you know what? You'd be right. So mm -hmm. I had to do some other stuff to okay. our code in order to resolve that. I and see. we think we've got the answer. And that's, and that's what we've been working on for two years. And um, before we started the video, I'm logged into my test net. I'm running code right now. And it's working. Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah, it works. I mean, it, so see, this is the best thing in crypto to be behind the scenes building, not even worrying about the market. Just this is what we're creating. Yeah. This is what we're <laughs> Dude, you, you and I were talking about this a little yeah. while ago, about how crazy this space is. I got... We, we've grown so much since we first started talking. Our Discord is now, well, 
I say it's huge compared to other discords. We're still tiny, but we've grown so much. Our Twitter followers and people that have heard about our project, they come on they're like, Oh man, this is so cool. We're going to make so much money. We're going to do like, What are you guys doing? Like, you want to come into this project and pay attention and maybe get involved and volunteer. Awesome. But you want to come and just speculate on the growth of our coin. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you can do that. That's cool. You know, what exchanges are you on? We're on a few exchanges. Uh, if you want to trade the coin, you can. That's not the goal here, people. We're not trying to make a coin so you can make a bunch of money and have your Lambo delivered to your house. That's not what I'm trying to do yeah. for, for teenagers around the world. We're actually doing this because we got businesses we that go. need a low cost alternative to using Hyperledger. They want to be able to integrate with a cryptocurrency, use a blockchain application, Okay. as a second tier abstracted ledger layer within their software or store data. That's going to be stable. It's going to be around for a really long time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's secure and is really low, super low usage cost. Interesting. So, so in theory, this is, this could be used by enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've already, I'm already having these meetings. We've already had sales meetings with customers who have come forward and said, we need to, you know, I've got uh, like my arcade token thing. I want to store my arcade tokens on your blockchain. So customers will walk in, it's just like going to the arcade. What? You and I, we go to the arcade, we walk in there with a stack of fives and we cash out, we got a bunch of brass <laughs> coins that represent what, 25 cents. And then we go kick ass at pinball and that's what we do. Okay. Well, you know, that those brass coins are really similar to what we the service that we provide with Lynx. I mean, you can yeah. walk up to Lynx into the casino, maybe, and maybe charge your card uh, with you know five dollars worth of Lynx, and then you can go and play cards. You can go hit the slots. You can go right. do whatever, and you you debit that Lynx. Just use it, okay. I got and you it. can take it home with you, and or and you can bring it back the next week, and it still works. Uh, okay. You could walk up to the cashier and cash out back into your dollars. So it's just, it works as a utility like that. It's not, you don't, you don't, nobody goes to the arcade and buys brass coins and then hopes that they're going to go up in value a year later. Like, I guess maybe the price of brass is going to go up in value. You could invest in that if you want, Man. you know, so, so yeah. Yeah. So there's that. So, so 2019, what are you, what is it looking like for this year? All right, so everything's going really well. Uh, we're gonna be going live with some of our code in just a week or so. Oh, nice. uh, depending, yeah, it's today, what's today's date? Today is the uh, 18th that we're shooting this video. And so we're, uh, in, in five or seven days, we're gonna be releasing some code. So the first phase of our hybrid proof of work goes live. We, because of the security requirements and network difficulty and some other technical jargon I won't bore you with, you can't just turn the whole thing on. I see. Yeah, you can't go from zero to 100. Okay. You have to kind of ramp up slowly. And so the first <laughs> activation of our feature set uh, activates in, in, in a few days, in, a, in five to seven days. Okay. It's, well, it's tough to tell. You don't know exactly when it's going to happen because it activates on a block number. I see. You can get a little technical. So is it you have to you set up the rig or you set up the uh, algorithm, the mining apparatus to prepare for the first phase? So what you do is uh, we actually have this really cool builder tool that I wrote myself. Uh, it's called Link CI. And so if you go to uh, github.com slash get links slash links CI, the letter C, uh, it stands for links cryptocurrency installer. Okay. And it works for your Raspberry Pi. It works for your small Raspberry Pi. Right. It works for your uh, VPS. It's really great for a VPS. So like oh, cool. sign up for an Amazon Web Services account or Linode. I really like Linode a lot. Cool. Um, it works with DigitalOcean. It works with Vulture. It looks, works with Scaleway. It works with all these other VPS providers. Nice. And it's a single one-line install script. So all you do is log in as, log in as root. And there's instructions on the GitHub website. Okay. Uh, cool. all, you do, oh, yeah, all you do is log in as root and you copy and paste. Gotcha. Go. And okay. yeah, it's really neat. And it just goes. It just does everything. It installs the links. It configures itself. It does everything it needs to do. And so uh, if you're installing the production environment, you kind of maybe do it before you go to sleep. By the time you get up in the morning and you're having your coffee, it'll be done. And it'll be all synced up on the network because it takes a while to sync up. 
I see. Yeah, and so uh, it'll be done and it'll be mining and it'll be participating in the network. Now all the rules mm -hmm. of hybrid proof of work activate based on block numbers when they roll around. So okay. you don't have to do anything. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Now the only thing you may have to do is, because we're still doing testing, and as you know, this stuff is experimental <laughs> and we're always making updates. We're always figuring out ways to make it better. Yeah. I may put out a Twitter post saying, hey guys, update your Raspberry Pi. There's a new version out. Okay. So all you do is you just flash your card again. Yeah. Pop yeah. it into your Raspberry Pi, turn it on. Or yeah. log into your VPS vendor's website, hit delete, and hit recreate again. Nope. Yeah. I am. Um, and what I, what I see is if, if you're in this space long enough, then you can start to get that, that tech savviness of what's going on. You know, it's like most people just only focus on one part, maybe the market side. But then if you're here long enough, you start doing a little bit more reading. You say, oh, this is what's happening. This is the technology. This is, uh, this is, this is what developers are doing. So you, it's just, you just get little bits and pieces to really see what's going on. So you can understand, say, oh, this year there's an update or there's a rollback or there's an adjustment or there was a whatever happens, you know, the, the, the investor or the person just becomes more educated the longer they're in the space and they, they, they're open to learn. <laughs> That's what's so exciting about this space, Mark. You figured this out. You, you kind of put your thumb on it a little bit. Like you can get into this just as a speculator or just, you know, as a curiosity, but, it, but boy, the hole goes deep. It's, uh, you know, and uh, you, just when you think, oh, man, I'm learning some stuff. I'm doing all right. You get to another point. You're like, oh, my God, there's this yeah. whole other layer yeah. of intricacy that I didn't know about or I didn't realize or I had made assumptions or, you know, maybe you'll be at a, you'll read a Medium article. You'll be at a conference. You'll be chit chatting with somebody in a discord and they'll say something. And you're like, well, what? oh, I didn't know that. Damn. And then, of course, now you're watching 50 Andreas Antonopoulos videos on a specific topic. You're like, oh my God, you can study this stuff for years and still realize, yeah, yeah. that's how I am. I mean, I'm always, I'm constantly learning new stuff about this. Nice. Uh, nice. I, love I love it, man. And this, this just make it for better humans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It, it, as an entrepreneur, I like it because I see opportunities with the, with the technology, like how I can leverage it in different ways. I mean, you don't always have to leverage it to just to be a cryptocurrency. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be Bitcoin. Like Ethereum is a really great example. You know, you got yeah. this really cool technology that emulates all the functions of Bitcoin, the exchange of value, but cool. You can write some code and have a smart contract or some contract. conditional yep. statements that activate on certain behaviors. Oh my gosh, that's so neat. Now imagine what else you can do. That's, I think that's why we have some, uh, such a broad uh, selection of really cool projects to follow. Yeah, yeah, I think, so for me personally, I love bio enhancement. I love the, the, the technology of us, nature and biology. So I love to see how that's becoming to integrate, you know, with, with stats, with monitoring, with uh, workouts or health. It's just a lot of this stuff can be used to help save time and, and better our lives. Yeah, you know, this is, it's interesting you brought that up. This is, uh, it's really insightful. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a hobbyist uh, in the, evo the study of evolutionary biology. Mm. And I have been for a long, long time. You can't see my bookshelf, but I got every Richard Dawkins book on my bookshelf over here. I love that guy. Uh, and the ideas that are, uh, he, he talks about. I think that my personal philosophy, and I had this for a long time, is that technology, the technology that we as human beings uh, endeavor in, upon, is really just an effort driven by our ego as organisms that know we're going to expire one day. Mm. It's really just an endeavor to uh, replicate what we see naturally occurring in nature, in biology, and uh, well, all of the sciences that occur outside of our pur uh, purview. So everything that's beyond us, we see it, and human beings are very egocentric. We like to <laughs> control everything. Everything rotates Right. Everything always orbits around the humans, of course. And usually it's orbits around the males first, then the females, and then the, you know, yeah, right. So, so we've got this very egocentric thing. So I'm going to trim down the forest, uh, which has solved the problem of converting CO2 into oxygen oh, and digesting all the other bad chemicals. And I'm going to invent technology that basically does the same thing. 
And so, gee whiz, nature already figured that out. Uh, why can't we just build on that technology? Or instead, maybe just figure out a way to come into balance with our environment? Here we go. Yeah. I mean, that's a crazy idea. I don't want to you know, rock any boats here. It's You're super, too radical. You're too radical. <laughs> too radical. So, um, so, so my point is a lot of the problems that we're working to solve in technology have already been solved in nature. Yeah. Uh, and so we can go to nature and see examples, see precedents uh, yeah. for if something could work and how something could be done. For example, DNA is a really great example. I've got a massive data set. Oh, man. Uh, I've got parity and oh. it breaks down in a very uh, expected slow manner over time. I can store massive amounts of data on oh. something that is so small you can't even see. Jeez. And it, oh, gee whiz, it happens to be embedded in almost every single cell in your body. You're carrying it around with you. And so that's, that's pretty exciting. I mean, it makes devices like this seem kind of childish, doesn't it? <laughs> if the aliens are watching us, because they've already figured this stuff out, the aliens are watching the humans like, boy, we should come back in a couple million years. <laughs> they're, still, they're still bumbling around. If they don't blow themselves up. Oh, man. That's true, man. And this, yo. That's just a whole nother, oh man. So what we're gonna do is actually, we're, we're gonna end this video and we're, what can the people do? Where should they go? Join the Discord, okay. get in, uh, involved. Yeah, so if you want to find out uh, and keep up on our project, we'd love to have you. We've got some really cool uh, moderators and members on our Discord. So all of the links, that, all the things that I'll talk to you, everything can be found from our website. So the website's the primary place to go. So the website's getlinks.io. It's not a .com, it's a .io. .io. So get, it's L-Y-N-X, getlinks.io. So on the website, you'll find links to our Discord. And if you're not familiar with Discord, it kind of is like Slack, except yeah. it's more for gamers. Yeah. Uh, and it's also a little bit less expensive. So we've got a big Slack channel. We've got lots of uh, channels and categories on there for, to focus on different discussion topics. There's some really nice people on there that'll help you uh, with questions that you might have. Hey, why would I do this? If there's no mining incentive reward, then why would I mine this? And the other stuff. Uh, the website has links to our white paper. So if you want to get technical, it's not too technical. It's only a, I don't know, 16 or 20 page document. That's cool. Read that paper. The first half of it is written in a non-technical way. So if you're not a tech right. techie nerd, you can still read the first half of our white paper. It's kind of cool. And then uh, also you can follow our Twitter. It's so official announcements from us for new updates, uh, like update your Raspberry Pi because we fixed something. Okay. Those always come over Twitter and they always come over our announcements channel, uh, official announcements, whatever it is on our Discord. Okay. And so those are the primary ways to do it. And then, uh, oh gosh, we're on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, we're on, we're listed on a bunch of exchanges. We're listed on a bunch of news sites. You can go to crypto compare. You can go to, uh, what's it? Crypto coin market cap .com. Uh, nice. there's a bunch of sites out there. Coin gecko, I think has us listed and you can read about us now. Also, I have an FAQ okay. on the website and we have a news, you know, they're just blog posts. Okay. So we have FAQ and posts on the website and those have, you know, updates about, big things that we're working on faq oftentimes those are videos of me talking oh. on my desktop doing okay. stuff so I if you want to learn like ben how do i disable the miner on my laptop because i want don't whatever there's probably a video on there for you to do that and it, you know i try to keep it short but i talk too much as you can tell so no um that's good man so if you're for 2019 if you're ever on the west coast hit me up if you're out here at a conference whatever i uh, would love to see catch up with you and any updates, uh, we can always come back on YouTube, or whatever, um, and show the people the progression of links. Get links. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving us your time. Much appreciated, man. And thank you, thank you for what you're doing in the space, and you know, just being uniquely you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. All right, now peace out, y'all. We'll be back.